Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who haven't been here before, my name is Lori Hill and I make videos about plastic surgery. My goal is to show you that beauty is attainable. It's also to lift the veil of secrecy that surrounds plastic surgery because everyone deserves to feel beautiful. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe. I'm not a plastic surgeon. My degree and background are in the dental field. This channel takes the position that plastic surgery is neither good or bad. It's completely neutral. I've had my own plastic surgery and I'm damn proud of it. Speaking of having my own plastic surgery, so many of you contacted me after my last video wanting to know who my facelift doctor was. So I went ahead and put his name and information in the description box below. But remember, I am doing a whole facelift video series, so make sure that you're subscribed for that. My doctor's website isn't fancy, but remember, the best doctors don't have to advertise. Today, we're continuing my series on Kim Kardashian West. This is video number two in the series. I've linked video number one on Kim's face directly after this video. So when this video ends, just continue watching on to video number one. Video number three is next, and it's gonna be all about Kim's skin procedures. So make sure you're subscribed and don't miss that one because it really promises to be fascinating. When I do these plastic surgery videos, it's always just my opinion only based on my extensive research of plastic surgery. If one of Kim's surgeons actually wanted to come on YouTube and talk about her surgeries, they would be in violation of the HIPAA Act which states that the contents of a patient's medical history be kept private and never disclosed by the doctors or auxiliary staff that worked on that patient or have knowledge of their procedures firsthand. The reason I make these celebrity plastic surgery videos are to help people young and old to understand that the perfection we see in the entertainment world is often man-made. Now, does that mean that natural beauty doesn't exist? Of course not. But even naturally beautiful celebrities get tweaks and work done in order to fit into the entertainment industry's mold of perfection. On this video, I had some help from Kiki, my co-researcher, as well as Dana over at IG Famous Bodies. Whether you love or hate Kim Kardashian, there is no arguing that this mother of four has built quite the business empire. As of June 2020, Kim is estimated to be worth $900 million, according to Forbes magazine. Kim has also started a clothing line called Skims that is a shapewear designed for every body type. This idea was probably inspired by Kim's own struggles with finding shapewear to fit her incredible hourglass proportions. Kim was always a stunner, even in her younger years. And over the years, she's really developed the amazing show-stopping figure that we see on her today. We've known of Kim for almost two decades now. And during that time, we have seen many amazing variations of her famous body. Her unbelievable curves have been a great influence to many and have even led hundreds of thousands of women to adopt her same aesthetic. But are Kim's curves truly surgery-free, as Kim herself claims? Come with me on this journey to find out. Hey guys, YouTube has implemented new strict policies on their videos. Because of these new policies, every time I attempted to upload this video uncensored, YouTube flagged it as explicit content, even when Kim was fully dressed. Because of this, you're watching the censored version of this video. I have uploaded the uncensored and raw version to my Patreon, which I linked in the description box below. From now on, all celebrity body videos will be uploaded to my Patreon as well as other more risque videos. I'll still be uploading my celebrity facial analysis videos to YouTube. Although Kim is probably one of the most photographed women in the world, there are very few legitimate photos of her from the years of 2000 to 2005 when she would have been in her early 20s. This is important because it's believed that some of Kim's surgeries started at this time. 
So although we're lacking true before photos, the bulk of Kim's plastic surgeries have been ongoing throughout her life in the spotlight, and we're definitely not lacking in photos there. Let's take a look at Kim's overall body shape. The Kibbe body typing system types Kim Kardashian as a soft natural. So this means that Kim has a slightly small waist in proportion to her bust and hips. Her hips are also only slightly curvy, and these types do tend towards an hourglass shape, but not an extreme hourglass. They are also categorized by having fleshy upper arms and thighs. Being a soft natural also means that Kim was never meant to have this hard muscle tone showing through her skin. She naturally has soft flesh that covers over any hard muscle or angular bone. If you've heard of the term hard body, Kim would be the opposite of this term. Here is a photo of Kim from 2007. This photo is actually an after photo because she already had had her first BBL by this point but we can still use this photo as a before reference point and we still see her natural body contours. In this photo, we see the curvy soft body that we talked about with a proportionate and natural chest. This is prior to her chest implants. Look at her stomach. Do you see the voluptuous flesh she has there while at the same time not presenting as being overweight? This is a defining feature of Kim's body type, of her natural body type. We don't see hard angular bone or abdominal muscle definition. I suspect that without some kind of surgical intervention, she wouldn't have had the type of midsection definition that we will see later on. Please keep that in mind. Now look at her hips. Do you see how there's a fleshy roundness to them? We don't see a severe hourglass curve. We also don't see a bony hip. When it comes to her waist, we see slight definition. It tapers in, but not to an extreme amount. It's definitely not an extreme hourglass. It's a beautiful, soft, curvy progression from her waist to her hips. Now look at her thighs. Do you see how they have a beautiful fleshiness both on the inner and outer thighs? Now let's look at Kim's rear. We see a nicely proportioned rear end with roundness. She may have already had her first BBL by this time, but the surgery did not produce a large rear, just one that was proportional to her existing natural body. I believe that the lipo that was done was strictly to harness fat for this BBL and not to create leaner looking contours. So let's consider this first BBL that Kim may have had done. There were a multitude of photos that people sent me that seemed to suggest that Kim had her first BBL when the BBL procedure was still in its infancy, in the early 2000s. From these photos, I concluded that Kim probably had fat harvested from her flanks and her stomach and then transferred to her behind. In these photos, Kim's body was very proportionate, but she did store fat in certain areas that could easily be removed and transferred to her behind. The notable areas of fat were on her flanks, back, and stomach. In a 2017 study of the BBL procedure, it was found that your chance of mortality is one in every 3,000 BBL patients. Why are BBLs so dangerous? The primary cause of death is something called a fat embolism, which is a chunk of fat that becomes loose and travels throughout your body, causing blockages to the heart and lungs. But how does the fat get into the bloodstream? Well, it's believed that during the fat transferring process, the gluteal blood vessels are damaged. And when they're damaged, they release the fat that they should be holding 
out into the body. And this is how the fat starts to travel and begins to cause problems. And this early BBL seemed to suit Kim for many years until we come to around 2008, where we see a second round of liposuction, this time for body contouring. The fat that was removed from her thighs and flanks was then transferred to her behind. There was also a chest augmentation. There was also fat removed from her arms. Now let's look at her chest. We see that her inner cleavage has taken on a rounded look, as well as her actual chest looking more round and firm. This is most likely the result of a chest augmentation with saline breast implants. We also see that the height of her chest has been raised, and this could be the result of a breast lift. We also see more smooth contouring in her hips, thighs, flanks, and lower tummy. This may be due to more liposuction all over her body for contouring reasons. Here we see Kim in 2010. It doesn't seem like there's been any further plastic surgery. We see a very toned body. It looks like Kim has been working out. We also see a large chest and a large behind that has retained most of the fat that was transferred to it. Her hips have not yet been altered with fat transfers as they will be in the later years. Kim looks absolutely stunning in these years. There have been speculation and rumors that Kim may have had liquid silicone injections to her rear at some point. The US Food and Drug Administration banned human injection of silicone liquid in 1991, but the practice continues underground. Liquid silicone in the body can block blood vessels in the brain, heart, and lungs. It's extremely dangerous. Research even suggests that silicone loose in the body can cause things like lupus, arthritis, and other diseases that you don't want to have. Many people hypothesize that Kim was maybe keeping her large behind because she was scared of the scars that removing silicone would cause. I think it's doubtful that Kim would actually have silicone injections simply because she was able to afford actual fat transfer because the idea has come up so much online that we did need to explore it. Now we're in 2013. Let's look at Kim's whole body after she gave birth to North. She looks beautiful. Her hips, thighs, and rear are all in nice proportion. I'm struck by how smooth her silhouette looks, particularly after pregnancy. I do think that Kim may have had some liposuction during this time all over her body. I also think that Kim had her chest implants swapped out for a new pair that look a little more natural and are made out of silicone. Now after this point, there's no more surgery until after Kim gives birth to Saint, which takes us to 2016. 2016 is the year that people couldn't seem to stop talking about Kim's behind. It's almost like Kim's butt was a celebrity all on its own. They called it the diaper behind because of the sag that had started to accumulate. In addition to its greatly increased size, we see that she's also developed a sag that seems to sit on the tops of her thighs. The texture of the skin on it has ridges and irregularities. This type of sag is something that's pretty common with repeated fat transfers to one area. The butt crease begins to strain and sag under the added and accumulated fat. It's in 2016 that we first noticed that Kim's hips have gotten quite a bit wider. This is when she started possibly doing fat transfer to her hips, whereas previously she was only putting it in her behind. So between 2016 through 2018, we see another possible BBL more liposuction, and fat transfer to her hips. I also believe there may have possibly been another chest augmentation with silicone breast implants, as well as a lift. The size is very proportional to the rest of her body. She looks beautiful. Now in 2019 to 2020, 
we see Kim has finally gotten a real tummy tuck. We see the characteristically round tummy tuck belly button and the completely flat washboard ab stomach. I also suspect Kim has had a procedure called ab etching, which is where they liposuction small amounts of fat from your abdomen so that you will automatically have ab definition. Remember that Kim's before body type was always soft and fleshy with very little definition. I also believe that Kim has had some laser liposuction to her upper body and buttocks. She looks overall thinner everywhere. Kim may be filling in the irregularities in her skin texture on her behind and on her hips with some sort of filler. I also believe there may have been some rib removal, which is controversial. And when Kim was asked this question, she said that her waist size has to do with the constricting dress that she was wearing. But nevertheless, I see this teeny tiny waist even when Kim isn't wearing a corset or a corset insert dress. Of course, she may have gotten this waist naturally. How much does it cost to have a body like Kim Kardashian? I use the top of the price range according to the current prices in Beverly Hills. For the more exotic procedure of rib removal, there are very few doctors who do this procedure and the ones that do start at 25,000. Three BBLs at 20,000 each total 60,000. Three liposuction sessions of multiple areas, 30,000 each, totaling 90,000. Three sets of bust implants at 20,000 each, 60,000. Two bust lifts at 20,000 each, totaling 40,000. Fat transfer to hips, 20,000. Tummy tuck, 30,000. Abdominal etching, 20,000. Laser liposuction of upper body and buttocks, 30,000. Body filler like Sculptra, 20,000. Rib removal, 50,000. Total beauty investment, $420,000. So what do you guys think about Kim Kardashian's amazing body? Do you think that I got everything right? Or were there a few things that you had doubts about? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Keep watching because at the end, I've linked Kim's face plastic surgery video or binge watch my celebrity playlist. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>